In your working folder, you have a document called characterparagraphstyles.ai. Go ahead and open that if you want to follow along. Hope you do. In the previous lesson, we worked on formatting. To most people, I would think offhand, it's probably not that big of a deal. I mean, there are some very minute kind of things you can do to formatting, but changing the font, justification, using a style like bold, bold italic, underline, whatever, is probably not that big of a deal because we've done things like that in programs like WordPerfect, Microsoft Word, TextEdit, Photoshop, okay, in design, and in Illustrator. What I don't like to do, however, is do something more than once. If I create a style, I don't have to do it more than once. And believe me, all programs, even Photoshop now, has styles. So let's talk about over on the left, I've done the formatting of the text. That took me about 10 minutes maybe, but that's 10 minutes, okay? 10 minutes of my life, and I don't want to spend another 10 minutes over here doing the same thing. Looking at that, decide, now what did I do over there? Did I make it two points bigger? How much did I bend that text over rolling the text? Did I do this? Did I do that? No, we're going to make styles. Now, if you are in the typography workspace, they're right down here. Character and paragraph styles. Let's bring both out. Characters. Now I'm going to bring paragraph styles out, and I'm going to touch up here. And when it goes transparent like that, we did this earlier, it will lock them together. This is the same text on both sides. This has been very meticulously and carefully formatted. This isn't yet. So we're going to make the styles based on the formatting, and then we're going to apply them. So, for example, this is a paragraph style. This is a paragraph style. So is this and this. Now, the only actual character style, it's not that big of a deal, is this right here. So let's start with the paragraph styles. Pick up your type tool. All you got to do is touch inside Adobe Illustrator, just right in there, because that technically is a paragraph. Go into paragraph styles, click new, right here. Now, whatever one you've started on, I've worked on some other documents. That's why it says four. Yours will probably say paragraph style one. Doesn't matter. Double click on it right here. Give it a name. Now, that's a subheading, so we're going to call that subheading one. I usually have more than one. This down here is my body text. Incidentally, notice we have a normal and a normal down here. Those are there by default. If you were to click on normal character or paragraph style while you had something over here selected, it would revert it back to the normal default styles for Illustrator. So we're not going to touch that button. Here's our body text in here. I've justified it. I've indented below it. I put in a first line indent up here. I like that. So just get in that paragraph somewhere and click the new button again and double click the paragraph style five, in my case five, and type in body, body text. Now I usually have more than one type of body text, so I'm going to call that body text one. Okay, down here is another one. That's indented on both sides, top and bottom. So I'm going to click inside there. Oh, notice the plus sign too. Let me show you that. That means that is normal paragraph text that doesn't have a style applied to it, but it's been changed. That's what the plus sign means. Don't click that button. Come down here and click new again. We'll call it indent. Now, I would suggest if you're like me and you do a lot of styles that you want the names very descriptive. Body text one, two, and three probably doesn't mean a whole lot. So you want to give them names that really make sense. Those are the paragraph styles. Now we have a character style right up here. So let's click up there. Now you can select it if you want, but you really don't have to. If you want to apply it at the same time, you can though. And we come up here, that's character style. Click here. We say character style one for you, but come in here and we'll call that bold italic. Okay, that's it. Now let's move over here. Put that right about there so we can see what we're doing. That is a subhead one. Click here, subhead one. So is this, subhead one. This is our body text right in here. This is body text down here. This right here and this one, they're two separate paragraphs, is indent. You could have done them both at the same time if you want to. Okay, now, character styles, you have to select for that. Adobe Illustrator is a bold italic, and so is it down here. There you go. I used the same text so you could see it did come out exactly the same. Took me, like I said, about 10 minutes over here. It took us about, what, 20 seconds over here. This program is document specific. If I open up a new document, those things won't be there. 
and I want to use them in another document. So that can, in a sense, be frustrating, but actually it isn't because there's a very easy way to get them. If you go to this button right here and you click it, one of your options is Load Character Styles. Now, if you select that option, it is going to ask you for an Adobe Illustrator document name. Like this one is Character Paragraph Styles.ai. If you had a new document open and you chose it, when you opened it, basically it wouldn't open this document. It would populate your character styles with any styles that were in that cool thing. And do the same thing for paragraph styles. Now, beside the fact that it's a quick, easy way to do things, the other reason is it's perfectly consistent because it knows exactly how you made it in the first place and you're not leaving anything out. And the third thing to me is the ability to experiment. Let me move this over here. Well, let's say for the sake of argument that your editor comes in and your editor says, well, actually, we kind of like that, Andy, but you're using the wrong color for your subheading or you're using the wrong font or it needs to be bigger. Think of anything you can do to text, okay? It needs to be X. And you say, well, you need to change that color, but, you know, I've got quite a few of those subheadings. So that means I'm going to have to go to them one at a time and change them. Now, if you did that, they wouldn't have styles. One of the other advantages to styles is the ability to change them globally. So let's just do that one. We need a different color. It shouldn't be blue. Now, that's our subheading one, which is right over here. Double click on it right here. Actually, don't let me do that. Here's the thing to remember. If you have something selected, it will actually change what you had selected before you have a chance to actually double click. So you can do this just to prove a point. I'm going to go over and pick up my selection tool and get out of everything. You don't have to have anything selected. Now, double click on subheading one. In subheading one are all the things that you can do to a font. Everything, including character color. Let me move that down just a little bit. We got the preview on. You say, well, it's supposed to be red. You say, you're kidding me, right? No, it's supposed to be red. Well, if you click here, turn right up here, turn right over here. Let me go ahead and click OK. Turn red down there. Styles, to me, I really do like them. We can move them between documents. We can use them to make things go very fast. We can use them for consistency because they'll always be the same thing when you click. And if we need to make a global change, if we change it, it will change everywhere that style has been used. Character and paragraph styles.